He, he came out of Bilderberg. He came out of the Westfield. He's being a little bit subtle, but not too. So there he is. That's him over there in that the blue green, car. Yeah. yeah. We're headed back to the Marriott here in Chantilly, Virginia, the scene of Bilderberg 2008. We successfully infiltrated the last day and a half inside, got out with some great stuff. We've been tailed, and uh, now we're going back to cover the dignitaries, the elitist, as they arrive. And right now is the prime time for them to start arriving for the next three or four hours. We took about a 30 minute break. I'm sure we missed a few, but it doesn't matter. So we've got scores of people that just organically are listeners, info warriors that are out here taking action. <laughs> and we're going to be out here for the next three days while you try to chart the future of our destiny. We're taking our destiny back. You're not our gods or our masters. We witnessed at least seven convoys of armed secret service entering the Westfields Marriott, and internal sources confirmed that both candidates did attend at least one meeting inside the conference. While the Bilderberg Group was 100% successful in 2008 at keeping their name out of the mainstream media, they did not fare as well when it came to the exploding independent press. During the entire two-day event, anti-New World Order protesters and alternative media encircled the hotel. You are being exposed everywhere, from David Rockefeller, from John Edwards, from Bill Clinton. Your game of secrecy is over! You're, still You're gonna play, get it, game, it's up close, you piece of dope, you piece of trash! This is Bernanke, man. Bernanke, you're going down! Obama, we know you're here, Obama. You cleared your schedule for the next three days. We know you're in Virginia. Arch criminals! New World Order scum! We are not your slave scum! Brave Americans came from all over the United States and bullhorned the main conference hall at close range as the global power brokers schemed inside. The global elite are desperate to keep their organizational meetings a secret. They are keenly aware that if the population discovers that policy is being developed covertly by powerful special interests, the people will revolt. It is our duty to expose these criminals. It's a criminal act uh, under federal law for our federal officials to have private meetings to discuss world policy uh, with uh, non-federal uh, non workers. So everybody from the State Department, Treasury Department, White House, Defense Department, and others who show up, as they always do, they're committing a criminal act simply by being here to attend a secret meeting with officials from other countries to, to discuss U.S. policy in the world. So literally, it's a criminal act. And every newspaper, every broadcaster, has a patriotic duty to expose these scum and the uh, evil they, pro they project. The election primary served as a great diversion while the true future course of the nation was being set behind closed doors. You've got obviously the Bilderberger Group founded by the former Nazi uh, Prince Bernard of Holland. You've got the Trilateral Commission founded by David Rockefeller's Big New Brzezinski. They're the ones who ran the Carter administration, everybody in the Carter administration from Carter and Mondale and Volcker and Brzezinski were all members of the Trilateral Commission. Founding member of rap sensation Public Enemy, Professor Griff gave us his view of the Obama phenomenon. Barack Obama's been given a pass by the Blue Bloods. He's been given the okay by certain secret societies for them to let him in. I truly believe um, imperialism and fascism needs a facelift. 
uh, and the facelift is going to have to be black. And the, the reason why I believe that is simply because um, I think they, they, they're trying to go into Africa. Well, they're already in Africa, but they want to totally control all the natural minerals uh, that they're going to need to carry themselves into the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd centuries. Mm -hmm. Are uh, you following me? So I think they, they, they have to go through a phase of galvanizing the masses of dark-skinned people that truly believe that change needs to come, but the change that they're talking about is not necessarily change for the better as far as the masses of the people. Mm -hmm. It's probably a better change for them. It's not going to change for us, right. the little man on the totem pole. And no one looks at the agenda. No, no as long as he that. positions himself right, have the right tie on, have the right smile, um, uh, repeats the slogans over and over and drives it and drives it home. The average the average American is just going to swallow it hook, line, and sinker. And we don't even know what the agenda is. Writing in his 1964 book with no apologies, Senator Barry Goldwater said, The Trilateral Commission is intended to be the vehicle for multinational consolidation of the commercial and banking interest by seizing control of the political government of the United States. The Trilateral Commission represents a skillful, coordinated effort to seize control and consolidate the four centers of power, political, monetary, intellectual, and ecclesiastical. What the Trilateral Commission intends is to create a worldwide economic power superior to the political governments of the nation states involved. As managers and creators of the system, they will rule the future. Bilderberg issues executive decisions and prime directives to its subdirectors for implementation. The Trilateral Commission takes the Bilderberg Group agenda and executes it through regional roundtable groups throughout Europe, Asia, and the Americas. The Council on Foreign Relations serves as the managing roundtable group in the United States sector. The Council on Foreign Relations has dominated every administration since the days of FDR. The way in which they make policy and rule is that they are a polycentric oligarchical system. You have to be a finance oligarch. Remember, this is not a society ruled by generals, not by priests, not by bureaucrats, not by demagogues, none of those, but by bankers. Bankers rule, and the bankers set up these institutions. They set up things modeled on the Royal Institute for International Affairs, Chatham House, and the Milner Roundtable of the period right after the uh, Boer War, so even before World War I. You had the British setting up these roundtables, institutes with publications and conferences, and this is how they make policy. Upon Obama's inauguration, members of the Bilderberg Group, Trilateral Commission, and CFR flooded into every position of power in the executive branch, replacing Trilateral Commission and CFR members who previously filled the positions during the Bush administration. When you look at the uh, U.S. ruling class, you'd have to say that they're a really pathetic bunch of failures and bunglers. They are a miserable excuse for a ruling class. And that's one of the big problems we have, is you go from Clinton to Bush to Obama, what stays the same is the ruling elite that gives these puppets the orders that they act on. And these orders are uh, wrong-headed, let's say, to say the least. They're basically bankrupt. They're going to lead to the collapse of this civilization. What they're doing is using the existence of the United States as a formerly powerful nation state to act out their Wall Street fantasies of world domination and maintaining their capital structures and maintaining their system of looting. And this can't be done. So the basic question is, they've hijacked our country and you've got to take it back from them. You've got to drive Wall Street out of the government and at that point you'd have a reasonable chance of getting back to prosperity and some kind of peace and order in international affairs. We had a chance to speak with economist and author George Humphrey. They have created a power elite and we're not talking about your you, the, the millionaire down the street. You can't even be a member of their club unless you're a multi-billionaire. And friends, this is not about rich versus poor. This is about a very, very small handful of, of the worst criminal element on this planet manipulating and destroying the good people of this nation and of this world. About this Obama with change. Look at the people he's put in to mastermind the economic recovery.